Hello, and welcome to Canadian Rights Reviews, where we examine the ins and outs of Canadian rights, freedoms, laws, and policies. Today's video comes to us from Canadian Rights Media. His channel has been going strong for years and he has lots of content available. I have edited this video as much as possible for length, while keeping relevant footage. Link to the video will be in the description below. In January 2021, CRM was filming out on location. While staying on public property, he was approached and spoken to by several pedestrians and vehicles. Couple of them. He has a smile on his face. Hi! How's it going? Good? United! He's out doing some public filming! I don't know, do you have one? <laughs> what can I do for you, my friend? I'm just out doing some public filming. Are you? Okay. Hi. Can we help you? Yeah, can you tell me how to get to Sesame Street? Do you need anything or what can we help you with? I don't need anything. Huh? I, I don't need anything. Curious what you're doing. Just doing some public filming. Okay. Can I ask for what? Well, you can ask, but I'm not too sure yet. No. Can I, can I ask who you're with? What are you, what are you doing? Or? Yeah, I'm with... I've um, had two of my drivers call me saying they're just a little bit uncomfortable. They're not sure what you're doing. And... Yeah, I'm with myself. I'm doing some public filming. Okay. All right. Well, have a good day. You too. Backing up on a street, not very smart. What? What are you doing? I'm 
Kids are filming. For myself. This is my leg. Well, whatever I can see from the public staff on, I'm on record. I'm all doing some public filming. Going. What's up, man? Not much. I'm just out doing some public filming, whatever I can see. Okay. Hi. So what do you think in video for? Because I'm out exercising my Canadian Charter rights to film in public. Oh, for what? For myself. Oh, for yourself? Yeah. No, it's okay. I just want to know uh, for myself. Uh, somebody taking video, video and just maybe asking permission or what? Do you understand? You have no expectation of privacy in public. No. <laughs> no. So. While on public, anybody can take your picture. Oh, it's good. Right? Yes. I mean, right now, like, there's security cameras. People have dash cams. Yeah. Right? So yeah. as, soon, as soon as you leave your house, you're always going to be on camera. Oh, it's good. I just want to know for myself what I did wrong. Somebody no, you didn't do wrong. anything wrong. No? Okay. No. <laughs> have a good day. Have you a good too. Day. Sorry about this you. No, it's okay. Ah, oh, here comes the police. She's not happy. 1646. We have uh, all our crews right there. Sixteen forty six right there. I'll mark right there. He's gonna take off. Oh maybe not. You got some education. Here we go. Hi. All right. How are you doing today? Good. Identify yourself. Yeah, my name is Classical Diamond. I'm at the Capitol Police Emergency Five Five Two Eight. And you? Increase in five four six three. So, why Obviously, we've got some complaints from the patrons here. And that's why we're called here. Obviously, you knew we were coming. No, I didn't. So you want us? To, you want to tell us what's going on? Am I being detained? Yes. Yeah, you are. For what? Stunting. What's stunting? Distracting drivers and motor vehicles. How can somebody be stunting if they're not in a vehicle? They have to be in a vehicle. It's anything that distracts a driver from a motor vehicle. So how am I, on a public easement, exercising my Canadian Charter rights, freedom of the press, be distracting? Section 115.2, E and F of the Alberta Traffic Safety Act outlines stunting 
which is defined as, to perform or engage in any stunt or other activity that is likely to distract, startle, or interfere with users of the highway. The two sections are separate as one is for drivers, and has demerit points attached that go against your license, the other for anyone other than the operator of a vehicle. I'm sure this law was originally written with good intent, however, due to the overly broad language, it has become a catch-all for any activity the police don't agree with related to highways. The definition of highway in Alberta, includes pretty much any surface that normally publicly accommodates vehicles, and includes sidewalks and ditches. You're on a roadway, sir. You're not on, when you're on this property, you're trespassing. So you're uh, actually, from the center of the road, 22 meters out, I'm allowed to, but it's not safe. So that's why I'm on the side of the road. Yeah, which, you're on a roadway. which I'm legally allowed to, sir. Clearly you're just doing this for attention. No, I'm not, sir. No, I'm not. So no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. CSLID, sir. Okay, you, you said I'm detained. Why do I have to give ID for? Because you're being detained for an investigation in stunting. Okay, investigation doesn't mean I have to ID myself. It does, actually. You should brush up on your charter rights. When you're I, I, by police, you need to provide identification. We are into some legal gray area due to the fact that the Alberta Traffic Safety Act includes infractions that do not relate to the operation of a motor vehicle. As a pedestrian you do not have to identify simply because you are being detained. On the other hand, as a driver you do have to identify. CRM is not operating a motor vehicle and is not being investigated for a crime under the Canadian Criminal Code. However, he is being investigated for an infraction under the Alberta Traffic Safety Act. Personally, in such a case, I would likely play it safe and provide ID. So you guys you know who I am. I don't know who you are. Why would I ask for ID if I didn't know who you are? We identified ourselves, remember? We asked you your name. You said identify yourself. You didn't actually give us your name. Until I'm giving a, told I'm giving a summons or being arrested, I actually don't have to. So are you giving me a summons for something right that now. I'm not doing? We are detaining you right now for stunting, like my partner said which means that we need your identification. You need my identification. Yeah. Now, if I don't, are you going to threaten me with arrest? Why wouldn't you? I'm just asking. Well, if we can't figure out who you are, that's obstructing, right? Okay. So I will, under the stress of being threatened of arrest, I will identify myself. Chad? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. Is this a current address? It's my ID, so of course it's current. Well, it's not necessarily current, right? This is what I was asking. Just confirming. I, I, I don't break the law. I make sure everything's current. What was your goal here today, Chad? As I said, I'm out doing some public filming. Okay. Freedom of the press working on a story. Okay. So your story is about a rental company? I cannot say anything about my story as it's oh, not public. It's so secretive. Well, you do I, important work, aren't you? Well, I'm not out harassing people that technically isn't breaking any laws. Yeah, well, our complainants said you were approaching vehicles as they were coming approaching. in. Approaching. That's harassing. Uh, no, it's not, sir. I never approach any well, vehicles. So okay, that's eye fine. Eye I have everything on camera. Don't worry, I have everything on camera. No, no, camera. I have everything on camera before you guys show up. So it's fine. You got a great news story going, dude? At this point, CRM understands these officers are going to do whatever they like and wisely stops talking. Are you going to stay there? I'm being Perfect. illegally detained. Yep, legally. Illegally, what?
Yeah. Right now you're under arrest. The stunting charge has been successfully challenged multiple times over the years, such as in the 1983 Alberta Court of Appeal case of R.V. Jones. The appellant was a prostitute charged with stunting for other activity that is likely to distract, startle, or interfere. In the case, the court held that, the ordinary meaning of these words leads me to conclude that the legislation was not directed at activities that merely drew attention to oneself, or excited towards oneself pleasurable emotions of those whose attention is drawn to them. A distraction must be more serious than an attraction. If such were not the case one could envision everyday activities which would fall within this section, in fear that those activities might divert the attention of some careless drivers. The appeal was successful and the appellant was acquitted. The 2009 case of R.V. White, makes reference to another relevant case I was unable to find online. In R.V. James 2004, from the Alberta Provincial Court, Ms. James was charged with stunning for activities as a squeegee kid. The judge found that Ms. James' conduct constituted a brief interference, it was nothing more than a minor inconvenience. The conduct complained of must be of a compelling nature, such that the effect of the consequence of that conduct, on the users of the highway, is or is likely to be serious or significant. Ms. James was acquitted. In the 2009 case of R.V. Pavlovsky, the accused was charged with five violations of City of Calgary bylaws, and two violations of Province of Alberta traffic safety legislation. One of those violations for stunting, for the use of a loudspeaker in his work with street church ministries. The accused was found not guilty on all counts. In response to the stunting charge the judge stated, I reject the officer's testimony that the actions of the accused distracted, or startled any operators of motor vehicles, and that the actions of the accused created a danger. Further, I find that a gathering such as that described in these circumstances is unlikely to distract, startle, or interfere with users of the highway. Lastly, perhaps the most well-known challenge of stunting is the 2016 case of R.V. Wells. It is also potentially, the most interesting, as part of the defense was based on a Section 2B charter violation. Robert Dale Wells chose to exercise his freedom of expression by mounting a large fluorescent pink sign in the back window of his car, bearing a colorful message for Stephen Harper. The judge ruled, prosecuting Wells for the simple act of displaying his sign in the rear window of a motor vehicle, being driven down a public highway is a violation of Section 2B of the Charter, which cannot be saved by Section 1 of the Charter. However, Mr. Wells was ultimately found guilty of the offense, due to his erratic driving to call attention to the sign. Based on case law cited, I believe Canadian rights media has a strong case for acquittal on his stunting charge, in addition to, a case for a charter violation under Section 2B. You can put that down, you can turn it off, take care of it. Put it down, you can put it in your backpack if you want. I right just... now you're under arrest. And are you going to be, are you going to come with us? Hey, I... if yeah. that's how it's going to go, okay? Okay. So I'm 100% cool with that. So, if it's, it's cool with so, you... So you want me to put this... I just want you to take, because I want to put you that want in the me back put it? of the car. So, can I just yeah, put yeah. this in my bag then? Yeah. Yeah. I just like, it looks like a nice one, so I don't want to touch it. We will update you further if we learn of any meaningful developments in this case. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.